What about Peter Sutcliffe, the Yorkshire Ripper? Would he kill 13 women? Like, how did they end up good friends with this man? Because I know, I think it was in your book where it talks about they had to take images of his teeth, like mould his teeth, because apparently there was teeth marks on these girls that could actually have been Jimmy Savile. Is that correct? Well, there were there were bite marks on some of the victims. And so he, he met Sutcliffe um, I think the first time was in a, on a prison visit to the Isle of Wight, I think it was. I think that's where he was sent first, Sutcliffe. And then when he was at Broadmoor, I mean, Savile was in and out of Broadmoor all the time and he he, he met Sutcliffe a lot. And he always said, oh, Peter, he was as good as gold. And I says, well, he wasn't really as good as gold, was he? I mean, he, he, he killed quite... He, he, not, 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 not really as good as gold, let's face it. You know, he was quite a bad man. And, like, he would talk about... Um, these people being sort of overtaken by impulses and they weren't bad. They were like, they were, they were, they were sort of at the mercy of these impulses that overtook them. So he would refuse to sort of say that, that Sutcliffe was a, was a bad man. Anyway, during the, you know, before Sutcliffe was caught or before anybody knew who Pete, Sut- Pete Sutcliffe was during the Ripper manhunt. I mean, a lot of men in Yorkshire and Manchester and all around there were, were called in. I mean, the, the police interviewed hundreds and hundreds and called people in. But one of the victims was found very close to his flat in Round Hay Park. And um, Savile was known, there were police reports that he was known for sort of being in and around Round Hay. I think not Round Hay, where was it? Chapel Town in Leeds, which was sort of area where a lot of prostitutes were. I think there were bite marks on this victim. And he was he was called in and they did take mould of his teeth because he was probably like a lot of other people. Uh, you know, he was, he was interviewed by the police. But he, whether he was a big a big sort of suspect or not, I don't know, but he certainly sort of, somebody from the police said to me, he was very excited, you know, when this body was found, you know, basically outside his house in Round Hay Park. Could that, could they have been friends before Sutcliffe went to prison? Uh, and like some sort of trophy, with some sick, satanic kind of weird fetish of leave the body next to my house. Listen, I'm just I, I, going off. I've got I've got no idea about that. I mean, I I I, I would have thought it's pretty unlikely, but then again, you know, Jimmy Savile's story is is pretty unlikely. I certainly didn't have any evidence for that. Um, but he was; they did take it seriously enough to take a mould of his teeth, you know. Um, so, and they did have you know intelligence on him that he was you know frequenting. Chapel Town or the main red light area in Leeds. So there was there was police intelligence on him. He wasn't like somebody who was completely whiter than white. And there was police intelligence on him for a long, long time at various police forces. And that was because of this fact that he moved around all the time. How can he be friends with a serial killer? That man murdered 13 innocent women. Like, it doesn't make sense. Like, it, I'm laughing because it's fucking crazy. Like, this is a high-profile figure one of the biggest celebrities in the UK, if not the biggest, is then friends with a man who's then killed innocent people. But then when he speaks about him, he says he's a good person, he's this and that, it's only impulses. Could he possibly be speaking about himself when he speaks about these people? Yeah, I think that's that's a really interesting point. And I think, you know, why Broadmoor? You know, why, why Broadmoor? I mean, Stoke Mandeville, he was in the spinal injuries unit. There were people who were paralyzed and couldn't move i mean you know you talk about vulnerable you know broadmoor i i feel that with broadmoor you know that the deeper he went there and the more he tried to find out and the more he looked and the more he spoke to people and he ended up being basically the boss of broadmoor you know thatcher based fact thatcher's government put him in charge of a task force to 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 take over broadmoor when broadmoor and a lot of the special hospitals were in sort of disarray he was he was put in charge of a task force. He was the governor, and he fell out with because it was run by uh, the prison officers' union. It wasn't like nurses; they weren't psychiatric nurses. There were there were psychiatric nurses there, but there were, the prison officers ran the ran the place. And he was Savoy was hugely unpopular with them because he just sort of got rid of loads of them, and he just sort of cracked down on them. But I do think I do think you know what you said is is a very high possibility in the sense that. He wanted to understand how people were diagnosed, how people were treated, what sort of tells there were, if you like, for that sort of behavior, because there were plenty of, you know, serial sex offenders inside Broadmoor that people, that, that he could get an understanding of perhaps how their 
minds were similar to his, worked, how they were treated, how they were identified. You know, is this another layer of this sort of insurance policy to actually be able to, you know, understand how these people were caught or what mistakes they made or or even, you know, just to to gravitate, you know, I think, you know, sex offenders seem to gravitate towards each other, doesn't it? And I think that there was probably that gravitational pull for him as well with some of those people. How much he was friends with Peter Sutcliffe, I don't know. I think Peter Sutcliffe was like a bit of a trophy association, a bit like a lot of these other people. You know, it made him look even more interesting that on the one hand, he was, you know, Prince Charles's, you know, inner circle advisor. And on the other hand, he's like, you know, he's rubbing shoulders with Peter Sutcliffe in, in Broadmoor, you know, maybe even in the same week. Was he educating himself with these psychopaths to then learn and not make the same mistakes as them? Or is it a possibility he got the kicks out of them telling their stories of the hideous things that they've done? Probably I, both. I think probably both, yeah. I think I think there was definitely a sense that he wanted to understand how, you know, the sort of like pathology almost of a psychopath. And I think he was a, I think he was, you know, he ticked so many of the boxes for the sort of identification of a psychopath. I do think he was. Um, and I think that he was interested in other people probably like him. And I think that the more he could understand about, you know, not only how they were treated, but how they were caught and what sort of impulses led led to their capture, led to them, you know, being jailed or hospitalized or, or given sort of life sentences, then the more he could probably avoid that. How does a presenter get the keys to Broadmoor? Like, what was the rumours of, the, the, was there any one ever come forward? The thing about Broadmoor, I always speak about this woman as well, Barbara, Barbara O'Hare. Right. Um, she wrote the book The Hospital. She exposed The Hospital. Um, where was this place? Aston Hall. Right. And uh, what the evil doctors used to do, they used to have a checklist, get the kids from the broken home, addict, addict parents, uh, these kids are kind of addicts themselves, very young, so they could sign them off as crazy. So when the kids were running away and exposing it, they would just take them straight back because they were signed off as, as nutcases. So was that part of his plan as well, was to get the keys for Broadmoor so they could manipulate people, abuse people, or was it not as... I don't, I don't know. I mean, I think he, it wasn't just Broadmoor. You know, he was involved with, um, was it Rampton, the other special hospital? Um, you know, he took kids, he took, like, parties out of special hospitals for, you know, visits to the seaside and stuff like that. He had the power to be able to say, okay, I'm going to take a busload of, you know, uh, you know, not convicted, but, like, certified, yeah. certified, dangerous, mentally ill people and I will take them to the seaside for a trip to see Peter Giaconelli, um and my mum at Scarborough. And he had that ability to, you know, turn up when he wanted, park his motorhome in the grounds, had the keys, could walk in and out pretty much onto any wing that he wanted. And there were reports of him, like, you know, loitering around the, the women's wing and like a bath time and stuff like that. And just sort of like standing there and looking and leering and, and whatever else. I mean, he just had the run of the place. I mean, he had the run of Leeds General Infirmary, he had the run of Stoke Mandeville, he had the run of Broadmoor. You know, he had, he had, and there were, these weren't the only hospitals. 